politics, never had much heart for. And I think if I had to be religious, I would not. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's the thing with religion today is it's so uh, predefined and preset. There's no relationship with it. And it also says that I've got to look like you and you've got to look like yeah. me and we've got brother and sister and amen after every, And it's not nothing against that. But I just feel that we lose some of our relatability to the world. We become less relevant. And I know yeah, the scripture, you know, come out from among them and all that. That's great. Yes, we need to do that. We're also to go out and preach. We are. The Lord of God. And I tell you, one of the scriptures that bothers me, and, and when I say bothers, it just it gets in my spirit and I wrestle with it, is found where Jesus is giving the parable of the unjust steward. And he's given an account. And the steward starts bringing in his master's debtors and says, hey, how much do you owe? I owe 100. Well, hey, here, write 50. Well, how much? I owe 80. Here, you know, knock, knock it down 20, you know. And it says that he commends him and says, dude, you're pretty shrewd. But he goes on to say that the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than are the sons of light. And that bothers me. That bothers me because I feel that in essence, it's implicating us that we could be doing more. We could be more relevant. We could be out there winning the lost in a way that, that is more effective, that is more relational, and that would draw people in by letting our true light shine, you know, uh, as opposed to letting our religion shine. Sure. Absolutely, I agree. You know, there's, there's a lot of forms and facets. Uh, directly one-on-one -on -one is, is one of the most uh, powerful forms. Mm -hmm. You know, if we all come into a, what we call a church, a building, you know, where are we? Where are we in the place of reaching the lost? Mm -hmm. We get a few, but the reality is we've got to go out amongst them. You know, and if we're going out religious, mm -hmm. we're going to run them off. You know, the Jesus that I study and yearn to know and have relationship with is a Jesus of love. Mm -hmm. You know, a Jesus that yearned to come and save the lost. Mm -hmm. It's and true. Yet that's so contradicted in so many places today. Definitely. I mean, it, the word says nothing's new under the sun. You look at Jesus' day, if we were to do the things that Jesus did, there's much of the church that would have issues with this, just like they had issues with Christ. Why are you hanging out with them? Well, who is them? You know, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, the, you know, everybody that's outside the church, what are you doing with them? You know, and yet I do feel that in, in many regards that nothing has changed. You know, we, we put on our Sunday best. We show up to church with a smile on the face. We may have been arguing all the way to church, yelling at the family, yelling at the wife, the wife yelling back. But the moment you hit the parking lot, bring, you know, it's like all of a sudden, you know, all. Put on your game face. You do. Yeah. And I believe that in church today, people are bleeding all over themselves. And they, they put a Band-Aid on to come in the doors and stand and, and, and just look the look and talk the talk. And, and, and it's not an implication. I mean, there's, there's times that I've had, I've had issues with the church until God has smacked me upside the head and said, wait a minute, that's still my bride. Amen. <laughs> if you were engaged and somebody came reviling against the one you loved, I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? And God, so it, I think we have to be careful in, in a lot of our assessments because I think there's, there's this tension where we look at the church and there's some dissatisfaction. And I've learned that I don't think it's our dissatisfaction. I think there's a dissatisfaction with the Father's heart with a lot of things that go on. You know? Absolutely. But as we stated before, everybody's got their issues. Everybody's dealing with stuff. Everybody's, you know, like the, word, it, you know, the world will say, fake it till you make it. Everybody's trying to do that. But I think that there's got to be an air of genuineness about a person that is a follower of Christ. Because following Christ can be very offensive. You know, I think of the scripture where he turns and, and like they're all walking away and he turns to his own disciples and says, well, hey, do you want to go too? You know, 
Is this word too hard for you? And I believe Peter says, where else could we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. I mean, what, what else would we do? We've laid it all down, you know. So I, I just feel that we're in, the, as our nation is in a time of def definition, that even the church is in that same mode of, of being defined and, and not being redefined because I don't think God's ever changed the game plan. He's never changed his uh, plan for what the church is to be. We're to be a light. We are to go. But yet, yeah, I find it funny that the word says that we're to make disciples. It didn't say save people. He didn't say go you therefore and get people saved. He said go you therefore and make disciples. Absolutely. You know? And I, I, I had a very interesting conversation with somebody one time that said, well, when does discipleship begin? Does it start after salvation? Or as your light is shining on your job, can you already have begun the wheels to turn in motion of getting a person discipled by them watching, by them viewing and seeing Christ in you? You know, and that can open up a whole other thing because what does Christ in me look like? You know, I mean, which Christ is that? I, I find Christ to be, I mean, I love the scripture where it says, and he fastened a whip. It was premeditated beating that he was going to put down on people in church, you know. I for, for, <laughs> but I digress. No, it's good. It's good. I agree. I mean, it. it it's I just the truth. Is it, what it, is. it is. I mean, to to be real. I mean, it, it's not a cookie cutter situation. I mean, it, it's not something that one size fits all. Yes, salvation, but we all come from different places, different experiences, different, uh, you know, where you come, uh, you know, people may not know, but you, you've hung around some pretty big names of people in the entertainment industry, yeah. you know. Your experience is totally different from my experience. I've never met Beyonce. I've never met Eminem. I've never been in those arenas. So to try to say that salvation for you and salvation for me is the same thing it's not the same path it does go through Christ but you have your own issues that Christ has to work out in you I've got mine that Christ has to work out in me uh, you know Ariel just taking a minute um, as we begin to close out here what what would you speak if there's you know um, some you know young men or women out there really aspiring to feel they've been called you know to this what, what, would, what would you say to them as far as like being called to worship or yeah, to lead they feel worship? Yeah, like they've been, you know, or, truly called to be someone to lead worship, you know. I would, I would definitely, I would definitely tell them to embrace their uniqueness. I think the sooner, uh, we are artists, you know, that that is an element of it, you know. Just like, I mean, you can't separate a, a pastor from being a speaker. He is a public speaker, you know, and there, there are certain skill sets that go with that. And so you, you do your best to hone the craft. I mean, I think of David, you know, the word says he was out with the sheep, you know, playing his instrument unto the Lord where nobody else could hear. So the only way that it's in the Bible is God heard it, you know, it, it meant something to him or it wouldn't be in there. And so I would say to, to develop, though, as much as the actual gift of musicianship or the skill sets of musicianship to also develop the presence of God and to understand that it's out of your relationship with God that your worship will flow. If I get up here and try to do what somebody else does, at that moment it shuts down because it's not me. It's not true. Amen. You know? Uh, and that's not to say don't sing songs that other people sing. I do that, but I always think of it as being a sift. I take something in. I, I, in essence, I chew on it until it becomes more me, and 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 I express it out of my expression. And so I, I would just very much encourage a person that it, you're a minister. If you look in the Word of God, the musicians they were priests and I, I don't think that that's something that's really given a lot of thought sometimes in in the environments of the day but it's a priestly office mm. and it requires not only time in the presence of God it requires time in the Word of God 